Zond is having a little lie down. You could actually try this bit at home. It's quite nice. But what you can't try at home is hooking Zond up to an electrocardiogram, which is what I've done. It's basically a heart monitor. And each one of these spikes on the display is a separate beat of the heart. And it doesn't matter what you're doing. Even if you're just lazing around like Zond, your heart never stops beating. It beats even when you're asleep. As Zond seems to be illustrating perfectly, you can see the spikes and his pulse is around 70. OK, Zond, demonstration over. What? What? What demonstration? I've been awake the whole time. Now, your heart was beating when you were a six-week-old embryo inside your mum, just the size of a raisin. Your heart is made up of millions of tiny cells, and each one of those cells beats on its own. And here's one of them. This is a single heart cell. It just won't stop beating, even without its mates. Absolutely brilliant, isn't it, Zond? Zond? Zond! What? It's not nap time. Now, if you ask more of your body, say when you exercise... Exercise? Yes, Zond, exercise. Your heart will step up and help you out. Right, give me some nice big star jumps, please, Zond. When you exercise, your muscles need lots more blood and oxygen. To provide this, the heart speeds up. As you can see, Zahn's heart rate is much higher now than when he was lying down. Even at rest, it beats around 100,000 times a day. So, you've seen how your heart beats at different rates depending on what you're doing. But how does your heart actually work? How does it get all that blood where you need it, when you need it? Well, we're going to show you. Check this out. This is a real heart. It's from a pig, but don't let that put you off. It's very similar to a human heart, and it's a pump with no equal. Blood arrives in the heart all tired and out of oxygen. The heart pumps it straight to the lungs, where it collects new oxygen. Back at the heart, it's given a mega pump, which scoots it all around the body. And there's no chance of it going the wrong way, thanks to the heart's special valves. And if you add up all the blood each of these beats pushes around the body, it comes to 7,200 litres a day. That's enough to fill 93 bathtubs. We've only got one bathtub. And if you fill it with blood, where am I going to have my bath? You need a bath. Now, to show you how it manages to do that, we're going to cut our pig's heart open. Looking inside the heart is absolutely amazing. The muscle here is very thick. This makes the heart really strong, and that's how it's able to pump blood right around your body. But it couldn't do it without one important bit of the heart, the valves, and you can see them here. Their job is to make sure the blood goes in the right direction. To see how the heart does its incredible job, we've set up our real heart, using plastic tubes as blood vessels and green water to do the job of your blood. OK, Chris, lift your bucket up a little bit. First, the heart fills with blood. It does this every time it beats. Oh, look, look at that. Look at it fill, look at it fill. OK, and squeeze now. Zahn's hands are doing what the heart does by itself thousands of times a day. And the heart is clever because everything's going into that bucket and nothing's going back into Chris's bucket. The heart only pumps blood in one direction. And that's thanks to the valves, not to Harry Styles. But there's one question that still remains. How powerful is the heart and how far can it squirt blood? I filled the heart. Now, you hold that bit, I'm going to get the bucket. Give me that. Quick, quick, quick. Get the bucket. OK. See okay. if you can get it. About a foot? Yeah, about half a metre. Go. OK, go. Yeah! It's not bad, but I think we can go further. Let's refill the heart. OK, quick, fill it up again. But Zahn Squeeze is not nearly as strong as a heartbeat. Just aim it all in the bucket. Ready? OK, three, two, one. <laughs> Zahn gets quite a lot beyond the bucket. We just didn't get any in the bucket, but I still think that's pretty impressive. About two and a half metres. Two and a half metres is pretty good, but a live heart actually beats powerfully enough to squirt blood more than ten metres. Ten metres? That's more powerful than my best water pistol. Luckily, Zahn's not ten metres away. Ouch. Earlier, we saw Iman with that mystery rash. Let's see how he's getting on. Back in Sheffield, Iman has spent the night in hospital after coming in with a mystery illness. 
He'd been at school in his art class when all of a sudden he'd look down to see his hands were swelling up and a spreading rash. After being diagnosed with HSP where your blood vessels become inflamed, he's been receiving pain medication to treat his sore and swollen joints. How's he feeling today? A lot better than yesterday. I think I might be able to stand up but not yet walk. Well, it's a step in the right direction. Well, he's not stepping quite yet, Zan, because just as things are looking up, there's been a new development. Someone at Iman's school might have meningitis, which is contagious. Because of this, consultant Judith Gilchrist is on the case. I think, although it's 90% sure it's HSP, I think there's a small chance we're dealing with meningitis because that rash that can look like that as well. Also, Iman's GP gave him antibiotics a few days ago, which can make meningitis look like HSP. He's actually had a couple of days of antibiotics already, um, and there's been a contact with a possible contact with a meningitis at school. Um, we may be dealing with a partially treated meningococcal infection. So basically, he needs to stop in for at least another two days, and we're going to put a drip in to the back of his hand. We'll take some more blood tests, and we'll start him on some intravenous antibiotics. Once Simon's handed over some of the red stuff, it's off to the lab for testing. But it'll take 48 hours to get the results. In the meantime, Iman just has to wait. Two days later, and our patient seems to be on the mend. A lot better now. I could walk. I can reach the laboratory right now. My legs still hurt, but I can still reach it. He might feel better, but he still has to get the results from his blood tests. And they're in. I've got some good news for you. Your blood test is a negative, so you can go home. It's great news. Iman's blood tests show he doesn't have meningitis. I'm so pleased. Finally, I'm going home. Yes. So it is HSP after all, which will clear up all by itself in a few weeks. At least for now, he's got a spring back in his step. Bye. Bye.